For a lot of years, we have watched shows about the court life at our favorite European kings. Or we have watched some soap opera set in medieval Korea or China, following the life of a courtier around the king or emperor. So I wondered, what would it take to be the perfect courtier in those scenarios? And with the help of two great gentlemen, we shall soon find out. Being a courtier means being a companion of a queen, king, or other ruler in their official home or court. For sure, it meant a good life, full of relaxing activities, gossip, and great food. Well, it would be a good life, yes, but depending on who do you choose to serve, it might be the path towards a certain death, especially if you serve a fanboy to Machiavelli. Despite the fact that there are major differences, such as geographically, philosophically, temporally, historically, and all of the allies, these gentlemen that I will discuss today and their important works are really close in matters of thinking and ideas. At first, I will tackle our European man of the action, Baldassare Castiglione. Then, I shall move on to Confucius, the great Chinese philosopher, and then at the end, do a little comparison. The Renaissance is a cultural movement first appearing in the Italian peninsula in the late 15th and early 16th centuries, which then spread to the rest of Europe. This movement brought about changes in many areas such as philosophy, literature, music, and architecture. There is also a return to ancient philosophy. Baldassare Castiglione was an Italian count, diplomat, courtier, and Renaissance author famous for his book The Courtier. He was born into an illustrious family near Mantua. He began his studies at the age of 16 in Milan. After the death of his father in 1499, he gave up studying and took the role of the head of the noble family. During his life, he would pursue a diplomatic career and he will eventually die of plague in Toledo in 1529. The Courtier is a book written by Castiglione during his lifetime and published a year before his death in Venice. The book is set in fictional discussions between the Dux Urbino's courtiers, where they discuss what the perfect courtier should be like. In order to understand the book, we must also understand this apparatus of a courtman surrounding the Duke. A court is the totality of the people in high office in the palace of a sovereign, and according to Peter Burke, a court is the family of a sovereign or a great noble. Such a retinue often numbered hundreds, thousands even. In Castiglione's time, the court of Urbino had about 350 members. However, the size of the court did not always mean great political power for the duke. A common practice among courtly people was to meet in a separate space to play various court games. These games were more like discussions, hence the author's inspiration to structure the book into discussions at the Duke's court. The work consists of five books, and I will focus on book one, where we can learn about the perfect courtier should be like. Book one begins with a discussion of the courtly men of the Duchy of Urbino. The game is proposed to begin, and the theme of the evening is the description of the perfect courtier. From this game, we learn that the man of the court should have three qualities. Grazia, sprezzatura, and affettazione. Grazia, for grace, is the quality that refers to a courtier's manner of speaking in public. A courtier should speak softly, clearly, be pleasant to the ear. The aim in your speech is to include this grace, so you will attract more and more people to support you. And in addition to the way you speak, you should always choose how to gesture. Sprezzatura is the second quality that refers to how you meet your goals. While working towards a particular goal, you must appear as if it is effortless, that it makes easy for you to meet any requirement. Affettazione is the third quality which refers to the way you behave in public, how you carry yourself, but also the way you dress, to be elegant but not strident, to be modest and not to be egotistical. Castiglione writes, quote, 
Wherever he goes, he must appear human, restrained, temperate, and especially to guard himself against clothing by which a man earns nothing but hatred and disgust from those who listen to him." End quote. In the discussion, we also learned that a courtier should also know the classical arts and how to handle a weapon, to be patient, and know how to charm a lady. Curiously, all of these traits should be used to win the public's opinion and to get into a favorable position, perhaps even gaining the position of nobleman. Of course, this book can also be considered as a guide to know or to learn how to behave in society. But it is very clear the purpose of the book is to use it in, in a way to gain favorable positions, not by unorthodox methods, but by developing personal talent. Confucianism is a Chinese philosophical and religious system. It is regarded as a way of life and it appeared around 6th century BC with the Chinese philosopher Confucius. The main thesis of Confucianism is the pursuit of the union of the individual with heaven or a relationship between the two sides. Although the philosophy places a stronger emphasis on religious and philosophical themes, there are also political or social themes, i.e. what a man or a state official should be like. Confucius was a Chinese philosopher and politician during the spring and autumn period. He is the founder of the philosophical movement that bears his name, which emphasizes personal and political ethics, justice, honesty, equality in social relations. His father was a commander in a local garrison, and he went into exile in 498 BC. He returned at the age of 68, where he worked as an advisor to various officials in the state of Lu. He died of natural causes at the age of 71 or 72, and he always said that he was only a teacher. Analects, known as Analects of Confucius, is a book composed of a collection of philosophical ideas and proverbs of Confucius, written later by his disciples. It is considered the basic book of Confucianism. It contains various themes such as social philosophy, politics, education, and ethics. It is composed of 20 books, each dealing with different subjects. In the first book, there are two main themes. What qualities a person should have and how ethics should reflect personal behavior. The sub-themes are duty or loyalty to parents. Character development is not only through study, but also by relating to other people. A person can maintain his moral character as long as he repairs his mistakes as soon as possible. The term Ren appears several times, which will translate into kindness or humanity. If a man's character possesses these traits, he could be considered morally superior. At the end of the book, the idea from the first chapter is repeated, not to seek public appreciation, but personal development through study. The second book deals more with the governmental matters. Confucius emphasizes moral traits of a state official, and he says, quote, when one rules by means of virtue, it is like the North Star. It dwells in its place and the other stars pay reverence to it." End quote. A true ruler rules by power of moral character, not by cruelty or punishment. If you rule by force and fear, hatred will set in and weaken your rule. The following books, 4 and 5, discuss the term Ren again, and specifically what belongs and does not belong to Ren. A man should not only seek fame and wealth, for then they will never have balance. And Confucius also says that every man makes a certain kind of mistakes. By observing him, you can tell what kind of character he has. Unsurprisingly, there are big differences between the two works. I can't say that they are opposed to each other, but the differences that they do arise, such as the purpose of the work, the context in which they were written, plus the biggest difference, period and geographical location. But it should be noted that the, in the Eastern world, Confucianism endured and remained relatively unchanged until the 20th century, which is an incredible achievement that a philosophical current remained relevant for so long. In some periods, even considered as a religion by certain practitioners of this philosophical current that dominated the Chinese world, and it was also used in the imperial court. First of all, we have to look at the purpose of the two books. 
while the courtier was written as a guide for friends for training a perfect courtier, Anlex was written to establish a new way of life, to show a new lifestyle in balance. While Castiglione suggests this way of behavior or ethic only to get into favorable position in a nobleman's court or to achieve the rank of nobleman, he says that a perfect courtier must be trained in the arts of war. A courtier must prepare himself for the challenges that await for him in his life. But Confucius prefers preparation for finding inner balance. He places importance on personal development, not only through study but also developing personal relationships with other people. Secondly, it is worth noting the context in which these works were written. The courtier was written in the midst of philosophical and cultural renaissance. And in contrast, Annex was written in a tumultuous period in Chinese history, a time full of wars, betrayals and assassinations. Confucius, in my opinion, is attempting a change for the better. For this reason, he emphasizes personal development, character building for the better and for balance. On the other hand, the only similarities I could find are related to character. In both cases, the emphasis on virtue and modesty. Besides, during the Renaissance, the emphasis was on the human being, on personal development, because change comes from within, and not from without. Another point is also duty to the family, a duty that must be respected at all costs, but there is a slight difference. While a courtier must be loyal to his family in order not to tarnish the noble name, Quote, a commoner is more easily forgiven for not doing good deeds than a nobleman who, if he strays from the path followed by his forefathers, tarnishes the family name. End quote. Confucius puts family care first in order to respect ancestors. So, if you care for your parents and respect them, you can pursue other pursuits, such as the study of literature or art. Quote, the master said, a young man should be filial within his home, and respectful of elders, should be careful and trustworthy, broadly caring of people at large, and should cleave to those who are ren. If he has energy left over, he may study for the refinements of culture. I wanted to conclude with saying why I made this comparison, and why I have searched to find any semblance between two writers from different time periods and cultures. Why haven't I made a comparison between Castiglione and Machiavelli? Same time period, works with roughly the same purpose. I tried to find a stepping stone for the idea that humans are similar and that they can value the same principles even though they were born millennia apart. Looking at Confucius's work, besides the information on the Eastern world, the way of life, we can see how much environment can influence someone. We can see what happened in a dynamic world like Europe, and while the Renaissance people were dis rediscovering the ancient philosophers, in China, the same philosophical trend remained for a long time because of the solid foundations laid by Confucius and his scholars. He observed people rising to power in a lightning fast way, but failing just as quickly. Both authors speak of kindness and gentleness, the study of arts and literature. The hardest thing for us is to understand why some characters acted in a certain way, it's hard to transpose ourselves into a chosen time period and live along with them. But with some help, like Astellionis, the courtier, and Confucius's analects, we can move the veil a bit and learn about humans born millennia away. Thank you for watching. See you on the next one.